characters. Nobody survives Zendrick. <laughs> I might. You guys are gonna be fine. Look, I'm I'm not an evil DM. You're only thirty percent less evil, I believe. It's it's an improvement. I, I'm I'm working on it. I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna dive right back on in. We did just find out oh though, God, um, some interesting factoids from the journal that um, there was an altercation a bit. Uh, well, I mean, like there's clearly been some some poor decision making made by Doctor Morrow's uh, and led everybody towards a mirage in the desert. And uh, Koluk, the uh, the captain of the watch, has um, was last seen storming off into the desert. But the party awakens and finds them cooking breakfast and a corpse amid the camp. So I'll leave it to you to figure out what you surmise from this and how you are going to react. Please take it away. We'll dive right back in right there. I just lay out all the evidence for everyone to look at and reading and be like I didn't wake up with sand in my ass this morning um uh, not you well know, um sorry you are do you look like a person or do you look like a warforged uh, I have skin well my funny That's... joke doesn't work now so pretend I didn't say Can anything I... I have skin, and you can see some of the brag. mechanics underneath. <laughs> brag about it. We all have skin. <laughs> I don't actually have skin. Mine's a little wrinkly. I'm kind of old. <laughs> I have some. I have some stuff for that. Uh, it seems to me that he was a bit bonkers. He kept forgetting things and getting lost. So yeah, we're that's trying to certain... go. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it certainly so... certainly seemed that way. But I mean, we. We can either sit here and do nothing, or we can try to figure out either who killed him or at least how to get home. Olaf, you said you had a passive of 21, correct? Passive insight of 21, a passive perception of 32. Perception of 32. Okay, does anybody else have anything higher than that? That's Not disgusting. higher, no. 26 no. here. No? 28 so. and 23. <laughs> Mine yeah, is so, 9. <laughs> Olaf, you will notice that uh, in Come to think of it, several of you, Kolak hasn't been heard from in a while. You haven't seen him in a little bit since the tent, in fact. You all sort of went charging off towards the jungle when Lior found um, the signs of locate object from the journal, but you have not seen anything from Kolak since. Has anyone seen Kolak? I figured he would have came chasing after us and helped. Well, can, I, can I see him? I, I haven't seen him since... I don't even know who that is. Who are we talking about? Uh, um, the opposition party. Uh, oh. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll uh, head back towards the uh, camp, I guess, and start looking for any sign of uh, his tracks. Can I, I'll can follow. I, can I use I'll my follow. keen mind feet to accurately recall the way back? Uh, yes, you're actually still within sight of camp. It's not that far away. Um, <laughs> but there is a significant amount of jungle in between that, that obscures your vision. So your astute observation, uh, you can find the exact path that you took to get here. Uh, you're, you're roughly 150 feet away from the camp. Um, upon re-entering the camp, uh, Lior, would you please make for me a survival check to try and uh, determine if he's around or if where he's gone. Could I do that? Could could I assist one of them? My passive survival is 21. 17. So, Lior, you, you, you note that he's not in the camp. You poke your head into all the tents and um, the coals still smolder from breakfast. Um, Urgrosh, please do go ahead and make a um, survival as well. Okay, so I got my minimum roll of 25. <laughs> One shot, it's high level. Wow. Yeah, Reliable uh, talent helps with that. Yeah. Um, 
not only is he not here, he has no motive to even be here. Um, and uh, after the information you've put together, it's fairly obvious. I mean, like, the footsteps actually kind of glow in your sight as they trail off in the opposite direction that Liar pointed towards the pages. He left. That way. Should I'm... we fight? Should we go after him, or should we just, like, leave him to his business and we keep going? I I'm going to go look in his tent and see if he's left anything. I have a feeling Back he has gone. not. In fact, his bed looks unslept in. I want to kill him now. He did just you... kind of abandon us. Like, we start getting attacked, and then he just fucked off. Usually talking comes before killing. Listen, not I think that case. <laughs> I think he needs to go through a trial, and then we find out whether he is guilty or not, but then we have to do some, uh, you know, reforms to the system and then put him in jail. I bring, out my I bring out my handcuffs. There we go. See, this is why you are my uh, vice president. Amen to that. <laughs> because handcuffs are so, a vice. As you are uh, sitting here arguing about which way he's gone and where, what to do about it and his potential guilt, things start to look a bit glassy around you. Colors seem to and swirl you start doubting your own vision and you, be, you feel like you're looking up at your feet suddenly and directionality just seems completely wrong and you can hear voices of your, your parents speaking to you telling you to be careful when entering the street and flashes from your childhood they feel surreal like almost now and you catch snatches of conversation and you see yourselves standing with Dr. Moroz. And everything looks normal, but you're all standing here. You don't know exactly what's going on, but Dr. Moroz is talking amid the center of a camp and he's telling you that we must find our way to the center of Zendrick. There is some arcane device this his theory on this is that there is something that is making people get lost this cannot be a natural effect it just does not make sense and dr morose he stands there in this this tan trench coat and a gold vest spectacles upon his brow lecturing in his normal fashion he's wearing a green undershirt and he has these these tan pants and knee-high leather boots he walks around with it completely unbuttoned, and he has a, an explorer's cap with the uh, uh, the Clifftop Explorer's Guild emblazoned on the side of it. And you know him. You know of him. You've been hired by this individual. He has brought you out here. He is, he's a very well-published researcher in the fields of medical science non-magical, non-arcane medical science that House Durasco is known for, for helping the poor. And he is extremely well-traveled and is no noted as a, one of the most preeminent leaders in the Clifftop Guild in Sharn. Do I still have his head? No, all of everything everything except your perception you have your 100 percent your normal memories but you are now in this strange time and place what the dream? hell is going on here I, I understand your frustration bernard it's, it's quite simple though the giants i swear it's the giants they've got to have some sort of arcane technology there's something i there's just too much consistency in the inconsistency of the stories. Now, I've been up in this wilderness, and I can tell you that it does not happen consistently that you lose your way. And some days your path will remain unchanged, and then suddenly you're lost, and you're on the other side of the continent. It is absolutely intentional.
So how do we get to the center? We march. We journal. We keep track of all of our our collective voices. Commit them to paper. We draw a map. And he gestures to a map in the back of his journal that he's been keeping. Can I, can I take a quick look at that map? Just so you know, we're all from the same... Him know. Absolutely, this is what I've got so far. And uh, for the viewers, it is there in the slideshow below me right here. Um, and you can see where he has mapped mm -hmm. out a bit of progress. There it is now. Um, throughout the course of the, the northern edge of the continent. I commit the map to memory and quickly flick through to see what day he's on. Uh, there's no mm -hmm. day on that. It is in the very last page. Then I like flick through his journal. Is he got his, is it part of his journal? Uh, yeah, it is, his, it is in his journal. There are no pages marked. There are no journal entries yet. All right. That's okay. I, I, I lean over to uh, the president-elect. <laughs> and I go, <clears throat> listen, this is... Uh... I think we've gone back before the election began, so I think you might need to, you know, re canvas people. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Bernie Sanders is going to see this. <laughs> Imagine. Robert? Is he, though? No, he's not. You brought this on yourself. <laughs> Listen. If we have to re-canvas, we re-canvas. We're going to go everywhere. We're going to talk to everyone. We're going to make sure people know that we care about them and that we're going to be the best president and the next president of Corvair. And the first president also. The only one we'll ever need. 100% <clears throat> agree. And because I am a druid, I actually live exceedingly long. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> okay. I'm going to um, cast, though, um, Greater Restoration on myself because this is... I'm not sure if it will do anything about what's going on. Uh, I'm going to say yes. Ooh. That's, uh, that's a pretty high-level spell to be using. And I, I, yeah, absolutely. You, uh, you regain um, some of your memories of the, uh, the last several days through your voyage um but at that point you begin swirling and unraveling again and it's this kaleidoscopic blurring effect that's similar to like a, like a chrome sphere if you ever looked at anything through a like a bubble or something like that and it just seems to warp everything around you and suddenly we're back amid the jungle in your camp with one exception there is snowfall on the ground it's, it's snowing where where'd this come from is is it cold it's or is freezing it the tripod is still there from, from your camp and everything, but the ashes are long since um, dead. And you note that the iron pot that was hanging is missing. We certainly the are tents cursed. Have uh, half of them collapsed under snow. All right, this is weird. Um, I could have sworn it wasn't snowing just a bit ago. You know, at first I thought that maybe something was going on illusory, but now I'm just thinking that we're traveling through time. Because this is weird. Time travel? I don't know. I, I, I have no information on it, but I can say that why else did we go what seemed to be back in time and now to snowfall and things have changed? Well... If you believe the old stories, this entire content was cursed by a god. But, you know, who believes about gods? He's a jerk. Uh, I believe in gods. I I'm a cleric. 
Fair enough. Do you f- worship the traveler? No, I worship the keeper. Well, they're kind of related. I heard the traveler has some good taste in cloaks. <laughs> I worship FDR. He's a special god. Uh, what does the ethereal plane look like to me right now? The ethereal plane? Because I can see up to 120 feet into the ethereal plane at all times. <laughs> Cloak of eyes. Someone took my tweets a little too literally. <laughs> I see everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can see that there is... Um, well, the ethereal plane is like pulling back a, a, a tool veil. Um, everything is desaturated as this um, iridescent veil is pulled away. And as you were looking in, and do you step in or you just see into uh, it? I just see into it. Okay. So you can sort of pick out the the heartbeats and the, the life forces of things in the jungle around you. And you see birds swooping through and you see the slumbering bats. You see um, there are some creatures below the surface that are hungry. And you get a sense that there is something malignant here. All right. Um, Don't dig. What's going on? Um, we're, we're, we're canceling all mining operations. We're not digging. <laughs> but why? Why aren't we digging? I mean, uh, we, I don't think we were going to dig anyway, right. but why? Just trust me. Don't dig. And well, now you I know mean, our I sequel, mining want to and now. How, how, how do you know information that is supposed to tell us not to dig? Um, I see did, everything. Did, did we have plans to dig? What the dig hell does that mean? That I had missed? I'm, I'm, your, I'm, your, I'm your vice president. I, I, I run your special intelligence. I'm here to protect you. Do I know that he's looking into the ethereal plane? <laughs> my, count, my, 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 my countless eyes are looking at you right now. <laughs> Rex, let me specify that when I say below the surface, I mean, uh, you know, within 15 feet of the surface. Life okay. Forms. Not like some, you know, visage of God- Kyber is staring at you from the <laughs> core and going to, like, swallow your eternal soul. <laughs> No, nah, just okay. like horrific trapdoor spiders. All right. You're, you're, you know, you can't see that far, right? 120 feet. <laughs> yeah, so you can't see the core. All right. Just getting my gun out. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you getting your gun out? Is that, If there's something that's going on, you need to tell us so we understand. There's stuff below your feet. And how where... do you know this? How How can I be sure that this is correct? It's called ground. I, I, I have a particular set of skills and talents I've refined over a long lifetime of jobs working in the intelligence industry. There is stuff I can see. There is stuff underneath your feet that want to kill you. And right about this time, you note that things start warping again. At least they were. <laughs> Uh, everything seems to twist again and you're in the center of this sphere and you find yourself um, in the desert. Uh, Amid the dunes. Well, this is interested. I am very warm suddenly. Oh, I think it's nice. This is real. It's, it's warm. Real What's weird. better than the snow? Well, you know yeah. what? Things keep shifting. I'm gonna just try something that that I've been thinking about all day, and I'm gonna step into the ethereal plane. Okay. Because um, I can do how that. He died. <laughs> well, sweating uh, buckets. Bernard Salamanders looks like pulls aside reality, <laughs> and well, we're gonna need a vice. Uh, to step into the role because he just steps behind the veil and disappears out of existence to everybody except for Rex who can still see him. 
But not that yeah, he yeah, tell you anybody. can still see me. Yeah, <laughs> not that you would tell anybody because this is a vacuum of power where he can step in. Absolutely, I can still see you. Yeah. So yeah. we, I don't know why Bernard, you have a so obviously oppositional vice, but um, they're glad you're <laughs> gone. <laughs> <laughs> just just if for some reason I can't get back, even though I can technically just step right back out, if some reason I can't get back, I will just be haunting you forever since you can see me <laughs> and hear me. I'm like, I'm already haunted by many other people. That's good. Rex, who are you talking to? All right. So, so Bernard Salamanders is just, he's in another plane of existence right now. I am taking temporary charge of his presidency. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, since it, that means pretty much nothing to me, I won't. It's all good. Don't worry. <laughs> well, we need to find this theorized arcane machine. I don't suppose anyone has to take magic on them, do they? Um. No one prepared to take magic. <laughs> oh, I, it's just right, not a thing I can do. I the camp, think I have it. I'm a barbarian. The camp is uh, around you is very orderly. Um, I do not. I have dispel magic. I do not have detect magic. I have detect magic. Oh, and thank Dr. Morose emerges from his tent. And he says, Hi. You lot you doing skulking about out here standing in the sun you're baking but oh I... well this is awkward seek shelter there is no time for this we will travel at nightfall Corey, i want to cast detect magic okay on what are you looking for uh, i'm trying to figure out if there's some type of magical effect that's uh, affecting us and making us go through time. You cannot perceive anything um, specifically like area related that is making you in a different place. Um, what you can tell, I mean, you could see everybody else's, um, you could see everybody's affects that they have uh, magical items on them. Um, and you get a general haze of everything is magic. Okay. So, so everything around us seems to be magical. And you lot seem to be wearing a lot of magical things, but just kind of out about us, there's magic I'm not familiar with. Well, that's but weird. Sorry, did you just cast a spell in my camp? You're going to distort my findings and I will not have it. Take your divine influence elsewhere, cleric. And with that, you see the passing of uh, everything warps back and you find yourselves amid the jungle. Is Bernard with us? Um... As this warping back happens, you can see this sphere passing away from you, retreating off into the jungle away from you. Interesting. Is that the two of us that can see into the ethereal plane or everyone? Everyone. You, you think we should follow that? I just hey, fly I, towards it. I got no other from, ideas. Yeah, I'm going to return from the astral plane. Like, I think we should go. Oh, people are already leaving. All right, let's go. Yeah, I'll start following the thing <laughs> at yeah, a okay. brisk 70 feet. Um, so you you are following the sphere. <clears throat> uh, it goes for... It's moving very quickly. It's not something that's uh, you know, just moving slowly away from you. Like This is like a projectile. Can, can I it attack the sphere? Yeah, like, am I having a hard time keeping up with it? Is that how fast it's moving? Absolutely. This is, uh, think of uh, a trebuchet stone speed. Ooh. 
Ooh, okay. well, you didn't see it for the Third. first time, and you also didn't see it coming because you weren't looking in that direction okay. necessarily. Oh, yeah, if it's moving that fast, then Leora is doing whatever they need to to like book uh, it, like including a step of the wind if needed to keep up with uh, it. Please give me an Arcana check. Oh, jeez, <laughs> that's not my thing. Arcana? Yeah, that's a nice nine. Nine. Thirteen. Hmm. A 13 will tell you that this is, in fact, a magic projectile. Some form. It's, it's traveling in a straight-ish line, but you're not sure. Okay, so perhaps I should turn around and follow where it came from. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Um, Maybe. I, we should just follow yeah. it, yeah? Follow it or where it came from? We're already going one direction. Let's let's follow it to start. Yeah. Okay. Can we tell about how fast it's going away from us? If I were to give you a number, it would be somewhere around 180 miles an hour. Whew. Faster than I can go. Whew. Yeah, that, that's a lot faster than Lior. <laughs> a little bit. It's. It's fine. We'll just. But I'm still is trying it, to, it, you know, keep an eye on it. Yeah, like, can we, we see like sort of... its path that it's traveling in? Like, if it's just like th hurtling through the jungle, like, is it hitting stuff that we like? We'd be able to follow it, even it's though it's not going making real fast? any impacts whatsoever as it's hitting things. It's just passing through everything like a warp. It's it's probably 75, 80 feet across. Um, and it looks like this semi-reflective distortion that's just passing away from you and as you're watching it another one passes by you in the left on the jungle on a similar trajectory uh all right let's go to where these are from shall we rather than where they yes. go yes 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 it seems let's to be a good idea let us triangulate Okay. I'm gonna look to see where, the where it seems well, there, that they there's came a lot from. of there's a lot of jungle canopy in between you and the and where they where they're coming from. Can I use? I'm gonna I'm gonna turn into a uh, giant eagle and fly into the sky. Uh, can I pick up the two slows and fly with them? Uh, you cannot hey. carry two. Can I, can I ride Wait, on the back can... of the wings of freedom? Yeah, you actually can. I, I can All carry. Right. I can carry oh. uh, quite heavy people. I can carry probably two easily. Yeah. I say I could cast fly on myself and two other people. My strength don't, is twenty. My carrying capacity is doubled with a powerful build. So two is probably a bit of a conservative. I'm I'm four hundred pounds. If that makes any difference. Fair enough. I, Maybe I just I carry mean, the like, turtle. I can carry. Oh, how much is this? I don't yeah, like do nobody cares. Really like, like, I can, I can carry, can carry all, almost like nine hundred pounds as a Let's giant just, eagle. What is the intent here, rather than trying to debate the mechanics of it? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to fly up to to you know see if I can tell from above the canopy where they're coming from. Because eagles okay. have insanely good eyesight, and Being I can get that you a. You are the first person to have said that you are going to act in such a way. You can grab one person, take them above the canopy with you. Well, of course, I'm good. Oh, I mean, <laughs> take my uh, vice president with me. With the extra eyes. <laughs> All right, you grab Rex and you fly, and now the rest of the party has no idea what's coming from the ethereal plane. And uh, roll for initiative. Oh. Just kidding. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to ask. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you make it away above the canopy, and you can see in the distance, um, well, j based on the position of the sun, somewhere to the southwest of you, there is a shattered tower atop a cliff um, amid the jungle. And from it, you see another one of these distortions travel underneath you and strike the party. Uh, you are not within the sphere, the two of you. Well, then, I mean, ah! um, so the rest of the party, you warp and transform and find yourselves in an icy tundra. 
All of this again. <laughs> I did uh, not bring a jacket, and I am not a fan of all this. I want to yeah. go back to the desert. <laughs> you are terrifyingly cold. It is. You can you can see icicles forming around you. Um, everybody's breath is steam in the air, and you see as there is a. And I wouldn't say a full army, but a good sized company of, um, well, they look like the individuals that uh, attacked you in the jungle before, though they're not wearing the paint. They're wearing much more chitinous armor um, and are heavily armed. They, uh, they sort of shamble. And Dr. Moreau steps out from behind you. Says, to arms, men. To arms. This is going to get dangerous. I do not know their intent, but we will take this day. And you see as soldiers come pouring out from uh, to the left and to the right of you and go off to meet these uh, individuals on a field of icy battle. Uh short time later you it flashes forward and you can see the carnage before you on the ice and dr morose is going through and turning corpses over what's left of them anyways and he looks to the group and he says I'm not certain of it but i think this is foul magic certainly unnatural at the very least And everything warps back. And you find yourself in the jungle. I made your camp. Does it look like the version of camp that we left? It like, does. Okay. It like does. fire and supplies and stuff all look the same. It is. And uh, you actually you see that uh, Bernard and Rex are in the sky above you. Perhaps we should take to the air. It does seem to be the best bet, but I, I mean, I can take, I, I can make myself fly and I can bring two other people. Works out. With me. And Urgrash will just lift into the air to go up towards right. the eagle. And I'll just put a hand on Lior and Olaf and cast fly on us. Perfect. And go up as well oh yeah Fly all right so you all rise above the canopy and you can see to the west of you there are open plains and um you can see to the north there is uh storm reach off in the distance to the east you can see there are some deserts and again to the southwest there are heavy deserts but immediately southwest of you <laughs> is this ruin um and you see the spheres that are sort of all, not quite rapid fire, but they are coming from multiple places about this ruin. Um, and this is probably two or three miles away from you where you are now. And looks like that's probably the place we want to want to be going to. Yeah. As yes, you're watching these small spheres, they look like bubbles grow atop the, the tower ruins and a small figure that, as near as you can tell hurls it from three or four places atop this ruin so there's like a person on top of the ruin throwing the stuff towards us doing the magic cool 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 well, that's rude. Yeah, I'm not quite a fan. Do you want? Do, should we just go, go see what that's all about? I oh. think we should go introduce ourselves. Well, Seems I think like, that's a good idea. What can? Seems like a what, good plan. What can, what can the team Liberty and Freedoms UAV see from <laughs> here? From the ethereal plane? Yeah. Uh, nothing. Okay. Just you can see the same thing that you've been saying. That's that is 
a couple miles away. Okay, so are you going to try to fly over to it? Is that is that what I'm understanding? I think so. Correct. Yeah, I think so. I can't speak eagle, but I'm just gesture for the commander in chief. <laughs> I still understand the languages I knew. Right. As you get closer and closer, you note there are giants. Mm. Uh, they are atop the ruins of these towers, and they are casting these spheres towards you. They are they're moving quickly, but you can see them coming because there's nothing between you and them. But as you get closer and closer, they're moving really fast. Um, so they get harder and harder to dodge. So everybody, please, for me, when you're about 100 meters away, make a dexterity save. This can only go well. I got a one. Nat 20! Oh, oh dear. I oh, guess. Uh, 31! Poor Olaf. My nat, 20, my nat 20 is only 22. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a seven to two, though. Oh, no. seven. Uh, nineteen. Okay, the DC was the eighteen for dodging ah. these. Um, so that is going to be three fails. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I got Rex, Fen, and uh, Olaf. Olaf. Okay, uh, you are struck actually by the same sphere, and you are transported to the planes um on the planes you were as you recall now as your memories are sort of returning to you um chased by some sort of smaller fastieth it's uh and you had a long battle uh, and you lost many friends uh well they weren't really friends. I mean, like they were, they were your escort. That's why they were there. But you guys have been out here for a month at this point and you'd built friendships with these people and they are no longer with you. And the, the loss of them suddenly strikes you. And, <laughs> and actually um, at that point, as it passes through, you, you recall this enormous um, hunt in which you lost 13 men to these things. They were, they were traveling in packs and they just tore your, your lines apart. Um, but in the carnage thereafter, you were able to dry a lot of the, the fallen meat from the, the dinosaurs that you had killed. And there was a great feast in the remembrance of your fallen companions. And Dr. Morose was, um, uh, instrumental in restoring morale after such heavy losses. Um, and then we flash back as it distorts and you are back in time and you, you have this memory. Um, and you see before you, all of you now, that the, um, the giants are shackled to the tops of these ruins. Uh, they, they are sort of standing there casting these spells and these enormous iron chains bind them to their position. And as you look closer, you note that they are perhaps um, undead. They are fairly desiccated. Hmm. Great. That's um, not good. It's not not ideal, no. Um you think I mean, Olaf, you're a cleric -y tapped. Is is there something you can do maybe to um help with this situation? Uh, I could fireball them. Oh, I meant like something that's like undead specific. Well, I am like, a grave clerk. I, I, could, I, I could do like a fireball, but... I mean, I can just like, yeah, punch them real hard. I like mean, it's messy, though? 
Mayhaps you can turn undead? I can destroy undead. Oh, well, that that's, like, very convenient if you could just, like, get rid of them. Is that Sen's Fortress? Is it what? Don't worry about me. <laughs> the, the problem is I have to get it's close house. enough in order to turn them. And then if they well, fail, they're destroyed. Well, well I feel like we're, we're getting close. Like, that's kind of the plan. Right? Yeah, we can, we can do this. I have faith in us. I'm diving. Yeah, all right. Let's get it over with and get things straightened out. Dodge, Freedom. duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Exactly. Totally We're doing all those things. 400 pound total you have ever seen. Okay, so <laughs> as you are diving in towards these giants, you note that scrambling about their feet, there are more drow. Uh, so I'm going to use my death cleric ability, uh, Eyes of the Grave. Are the drow undead, too? Uh, the drow are not undead. How many are there? Uh, there were about 30-ish drow. They seem to be... Well, they seem to be casting spells at the giants. Perhaps a smarter thing would be to kind of eliminate the the little ones, and then maybe the big ones will just stop doing things. They're sort of sitting on top of these, uh, on top of the the ruins as well, and casting this blue glow that is infusing these um, undead giants. How big is the top area? Uh, it's about 50 feet across and shattered tower. It's not quite level. It's broken off at an angle like this. There's half of a floor and there's a wall circling it. And you can see down in below. On and how far are we wall. away right now? About 150, 200 feet away. Uh, I'd like to move into about 120 feet if I could. Absolutely. We're not in initiative order. Cool. And then I'm going to cast Ice Storm. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I can do that from 300 feet. I won't move any closer. I'm going to cast Ice Storm because I can cast that while in animal shape form because I'm a level 18 druid <laughs> on them. It's got a 40 foot radius. Broken. So I'm basically just going to try and hit the entire thing other than 10 foot kind of an area. Okay. Absolutely. Or basically five feet at the edges. And so they would need to make uh, DC 19 deck saves. I'm not going to roll for all of them. I will roll how many uh, manage to dodge. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's actually pretty good. 16 of them dodged out of the way. Uh, the giants <laughs> were not in those 16. I mean, they still take half damage unless they uh, have the ability to avoid that. Um, no. No, no. Okay. Um, so they take... 12 bludgeoning damage and 18 cold damage on the first turn. And this can go on for 10 minutes and I can just fly away and hold concentration. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Deuce, I'm going out. <laughs> See you in a bit. So, uh, yeah, that's basically 30 points of damage. Okay. Um, is that obscure vision? Uh, it's difficult terrain. Okay. Yeah, just difficult terrain. Okay. So with that, we're going to have to jump into initiative. Um, so it is going to be a large combat because um, Bernard Salamanders is... Um, Apparently. Providing decisive Lord leadership in this universe. Hey, listen, no, hold on. <laughs> I, 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 undead, that's messed up. I don't appreciate undead. Defying the healthcare so, plan. I would say, yeah, healthcare for most. How does campaigning hey, in Karnath go? That's not. They're not. They're not my constituents. They're not part of my country. I don't. <laughs> okay, so please, everybody, please do put your initiative into the Zoom chat. 
and I'll uh, get us in order. All right. So the ice storm begins laying waste and uh, well, freezing everything on the top of this tower area. There is approximately 50 foot wide half circle of uh, ground that you can see an enormous gaping maw from below. The, the giants immediately begin freezing up and feeling the effects of this slowing down. It interrupts all of their spells, in fact. Um, the, uh, the, the blue glow that is coming from these drow and going into the giants is stopped as well. Um, only, only three or four of the, the drow remain casting spells through this onslaught. Um, as ice crystals begin forming on everything. Uh, we are going to start with Urgrash, who is uncannily fast. Uh, you know, <laughs> alert and adventure initiative will do that to you. Um, we were what? We flew to what? 120 feet away? Uh, you were all sitting between 150 and 180 feet. Maybe okay, so I will bonus action dash. And fly to one of the drow into the ice storm that is still casting. All right. And is that at the beginning or the end of your turn in which you made your saves? I'm checking. Okay. Either way, Nat, what are you, or what is Urgrosh doing once he is in there? Uh, I'm going to go to one of those casting and, you know, give him the stab stab. The stab stab. One of the, uh, the drow. Yeah. So that's still casting the magics. Oh, actually, the damage only happens once, it looks like. It's just the difficult terrain for, for the... Uh... Wait, there's no oh. duration. I read a duration. I'm an idiot. Ignore me. So it's just until the end of my next turn that there's difficult terrain and nothing else. The storm's gone. I misread my spell. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. That's a very short storm. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you were making ice storm sound a lot better than I remembered it being. Yeah, I, I, I think I, because I was reading a different spell right beforehand that does stay around, that I mm. probably put the two together. All okay. right. So you're going to do the stab stab? Yep, yep. Uh, that's a... Drow. Yeah, I mean, the magic's got to be bad, right? Yeah, I mean, Dr. I mean, Moroz would definitely agree with that. I'm, uh, you know, I got to make some bad decisions, Corey. We're, we only got an hour left. Um, that's a 23 and a 26 to hit. You heard him, people out there. Make some donations so we can have some bad decisions affect Urgrosh. Exactly. Yeah. Um, assuming a 23 hits, uh, I, you're talking use average damage. I wrote that down. So that is uh, 28 plus 25, 53 damage to him. Okay, to the drow. All right. So that one. Uh, uh, you see, he takes a knee as you, you put your swords through him, and uh, he looks up at you with much fury in his eyes, and you recognize that this is perhaps not the, the same people. They, they look physically similar to the, the drow that you encountered out in the woods, but these are not the Vilkur. And he stares back up with you with a fire in his eyes, that seems to melt the ice around him. All right. That's scary. I fly 10 feet away and then my turn. Uh, you're going to fly away? It's 10 feet. Uh, I have mobile and I attacked him so he doesn't get an opportunity attack. Mobile. There we go. Okay. That's what I'm asking about. Also, All let's right. me ignore the difficult terrain. All right, and next in initiative order is going to be 22 for Bernard. So uh, <clears throat> seeing all this stuff, Bernard is going to decide, eh, I'm going to do my most powerful thing. <laughs> and as a bonus action, I'm going to drop Wild Shape while we're in the air. Oh, well, who's that eagle carrying? The, I'm guessing yeah. Rex based on the distress to look yeah. over here. And then and then quickly I put a silver like circlet on my head, make a few motions with my hand and s say some words. And then Rex, who is above me, falling down onto me, 
hits me as my back begins stretching out and wings come out of the side and my skins turn to scale, red, big scales, until finally I end in the form of an adult red dragon. Using what shape change, my ninth Mr. level spell. President. <laughs> <laughs> well, TPK. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with my 90 foot fly speed, I will fly as close as I can uh, towards them. But I would, you know, probably end at yeah, probably somewhere around 90 feet based on the fact that I flew away for a bit after casting the other thing. Okay, okay. That uh, enormous red dragon joins the battlefield, y'all. Lordy. Yep. And I didn't do it. Tim, <laughs> you're a dragon rider. You're a dragon, you're a dragon rider, rider man. This life, is why you're my vice president. Your life expectancy <laughs> just went way down. Ooh. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's true. All airborne combat pilots have low life expectancies. Yep. So you can think you rolled it back up. Because <laughs> DM Corey isn't killing you. It's all Robert. It's all Robert. Well, I, I I I do get hungry while I'm in dragon form, so I always need a snack with me. That's true. I yeah. mean, I'll all give that you, I'll, honestly, I'll give you indigestion. You don't want that. <laughs> I mean it just makes my fire more powerful now, doesn't it? Not this time. In my dragon form, I sound like this. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Because I can talk. Let's go, Vice President. All right. And next in initiative order is going to be Fen. Well, that's a whole lot. <laughs> um, go ahead and top of that. I cannot. However, um, I am just fine. So... Let me see. So I mean, like, I, if we're if we're like pulling out like the big fun stuff, like we can pull out the big fun stuff. Um, so I would like to cast Circle of Death, which is um, a sixty foot radius sphere, <laughs> and I just would like to like get that set up so that the most possible people are inside of it. Don't worry about hitting me. Is there yeah, any will. saves associated with that? Yes, it's a con save. Okay. But yeah, uh, what is so the DC? A, yeah. Um, the DC is a number 19. 19, okay. All right. So, yeah, only 13 of them managed to to pass the con save. What happens out of in Circle of Death? What happens in Circle of Death is um, damage. Damn it! Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're doing some damage. So, um, everyone is going to take. So I'm casting it. Wait, no. See, I thought Circle of Death would heal the undead. What are you? I mean, you've got these no, undead no. giants in there. What is? It's going to heal them up. Yeah, no, I'm I'm concerned with the the alive ones. Uh, um, so they're gonna th they're gonna take eight d six necrotic damage. Um, if they failed, and then they're going to take half that if they succeeded. So stand by while I roll some dice. Oh, that was very good. <laughs> oh, that was very good, too. So that's 38 necrotic damage for anyone who failed. And okay. math, 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 19 for anyone who succeeded. I take nine damage. Sorry. I'm fine. Okay. You gave me more than that in temperature. Yeah, right. Oh, that's yeah, right. <laughs> so you see as a number of probably five or six of these uh these drow. Um in fact, yeah, it's it's six of them actually blow apart in a black spray. And they just sort of explode in corruption and hmm. turn into a that's puddle. You. And their armor clatters to the ground. I'll tell you what, that never gets old. <laughs> um, and I think that's gonna do it for me. That that seems that seems plenty. 
successful. We're just going to hang out. Okay. Uh, a number of the other ones uh, have taken a knee. They're, they've fallen pretty hard. They do not look super happy. Um, next in initiative order is going to be uh, Rex. Rex, you're new knowing. I just realized, yes. <laughs> Since I'm in aviator mode. Um... Aviator mode? <laughs> All right, what can right I do? Yeah, Maverick over here. Don't right. don't worry, Rex. I got all my dice ready for my next attack. Uh, right. I'm okay. I'm going to try something stupid. Because why not? Please do. Please. Uh, is there any target that I can well I can see? But like, is there any target I can see within like 120 feet? Um, there are a lot of targets within 120 feet because you are riding the dragon who just flew up to uh, 30 feet away from the wall. Oh, oh it oh, 30 away. feet. Okay, I'll take, I'll take oh, 30 right. feet. Okay, then. Right. Well, then. Um, going. Can I use these my move? Actually, would it use an action for me to dismount the dragon? Ah, that's You're definitely not really. farther than you can jump. <laughs> right. From top of the dragon, then, uh, I'm going to insightful fighting one of the I mean, don't let me discourage you you're welcome to try insightful dragon insightful fighting one of the um i need to see, actually see what i'm doing oh you're not uh, fighting me oh come uh, on ins insightful fighting one of the giants so that's a bonus action i was really hoping you were going to run up and jump off robert's skull <laughs> uh would so have been amazing one of the giants needs to make a deception check versus my insight check okay. insightful fighting's fun which is a minimum for me 21. That's an 11 from the giant. So I can now do sneak attack on it anyway. And I like to get all my dice ready. Uh, I'd like to do uh, my first strike with my Hellfire gun. Oh, um, no. um, which is ooh, a plus 9 to 16. What's that? 25 to hit. Yeah. With yeah. sneak attack and eldritch smite Ooh. Ooh, that's a fun stack so oh my so that's uh four plus six plus five plus five plus one plus one plus two plus four plus eight plus eight that's 44 points of uh damage all right my first and you're strike. shooting one of the the undead giants Go yes on. That's the first one. Okay. Is it still up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I will then do that again, minus the sneak attack. Because I can. Uh, that is a... 20 to hit. Yes. Ooh, that's a... Well, that's even worse. But again, with another lot of Eldritch Smite. Um, so that's... Seven plus seven plus eight plus eight plus four plus three. That's a 37. 37, yeah. Is it still up? Uh, negative. Your your arcane bolt just flashes straight through this thing's chest, leaving a crater <clears throat> about six inches across, and it falls to a knee and actually tumbles off the edge of the ruin um, and is suspended by its shackles. Okay. Uh, just... Last one. Uh, bonus action. Bonus. Oh, I've already done some actions. Yeah, I'm good. You could run up and down my spine a little bit. Actually, no. Yeah, why not? I will get some exercise in. Yeah. I will run up, and would you no, say it's an action to jump off? Uh, no, that's going to be just part of your movement. You know, but I will. Run I will, I will run give you jump. an advantage because of the momentum. Um, not necessarily mechanically advantage, but because of the mm -hmm. momentum of a dragon flying in ninety feet and you are running on this dragon's back, gaining that momentum, you will be able to jump twice your normal distance with a strength check. Okay. Which is going to be fine. You're also significantly above this landing. So, so ugh, that's not good, really. That's a seven. But it's fine. Jumping. That, that is the definition of not fine, in fact. That's, that's going to give you a about 
17 feet of jump. <laughs> um, oh, I just killed myself. <laughs> and you see as Rex makes these massive attacks towards this uh, this undead giant and it falls off and he apparently was extremely distraught by this because he goes running and diving off the front of the dragon and trips over one of the horns on the way off. <laughs> Slips in something gooey, I don't know, because he just starts, to, starts plummeting towards the ground, which is about he... 700 feet below. So it's going to take a while for you to get there. Um, That's fine. Let's see, how many turns is that going to be? It's uh, it's about four turns it's going to take for you to hit the ground. I'm good with that. As he falls past my, my face, I'm like, no! <laughs> I stick my tongue out to try and get him, but he just sl- slides off the tongue, so now he's wet, too. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> I'm good Thanks, with Thanks, I this. hate you're it so much. you a dragon. That's your last <laughs> memory right there. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. You got four turns to find out if somebody's going to do something or if you've got some bit of cleverness on the way down. I have an idea. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. I mean, if we're level 18, I don't think falling is going to be the thing that kills you. All right. Um, next is going to be the uh, Okay. Uh, so looking around me now, what, what, what am I seeing? <laughs> So you have been grabbed <laughs> by Urgrosh, correct? Uh, no, I've got fly on me from got fly. Fen. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you are standing at the top of the, well, floating above the canopy, um, about 175 feet away from this shattered ruin of a tower. And on top of it, there are um, drow running around and casting this blue channeling glow into these undead giants who have been casting spells at you. Uh, Robert has cast okay. a, an enormous ice storm and Urgrosh has flown in and then Robert turned into a giant uh, right. dragon. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it seems like the undead, you, did you say the undead giants were throwing spells at us or the drow were throwing spells the, at us? The, the drow seem to be channeling some sort of effect into the giants and the giants, the undead giants are casting these giant spheres and throwing them at you guys. Okay. All right. Um, but all that right, was well, all interrupted by the, 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 the ice storm spell. Right. Okay. All right. Um, shit. Okay. I think it's going to take me like my whole turn just to get anywhere. Cause I'm like 170. You said what's the fly speed? 60 feet. Um, yeah, I think I've just, whatever's the closest enemy to me, I'll just spend my whole turn, I think, zipping there. Um, so I can dash. We'll call that fast enough to get you um, to them or about about 10 feet away well, or, or within right. early movement of next turn. All right. Like, I can burn a step of the wind if I need to to get there the full, like, in one turn. Do I need to, do you think? Well, I don't know if these guys are going to leave you anybody on the battlefield to kill by your next turn. It comes. Around. I will <laughs> actually note that your on our movement buffs the fly speed by thirty. Oh, does it still affect the fly speed? I just assumed yeah. that it was like the spell speed. So you got a ni- you got a ninety fly right now. Oh shit! All right. Well then, yeah, I that... I can get there at least also, this turn. I don't think I can do anything. Mobile also affects it. I've okay. So then it's actually a hundred feet. Yeah. All right. So I can get there this turn. <laughs> I have mobile too, and it affects my dragon's fly speed, which is why I'm 90, not 80. All right. Well, then in that case, I can get there just by, yeah, I'll burn a key point so that I can dash as my bonus action with Step of the Wind, and that'll get me there um, to whatever the nearest bad guy is. Is it a giant? Is it a drow? Uh, yeah, it'll be a giant who's standing at the edge of the, uh, of the, oh, the ruin. Oh, Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm busy. <laughs> As you go flying right past, you see, whoosh, as he falls past, you almost collide. Well, with I, Sam forgot, to be fair, and Rex's <laughs> situation wasn't described in the overlay of what I was looking at. Sam's on a lot of medication right now, y'all. <laughs> also, also, Sam you know, forgot, to be fair. Sam brought a backup character. So, you know. Sam's not playing a support character for once, so I was like, somebody's in danger, not my problem. <laughs> um so yeah i'm gonna zip over to the giant um like i said and i will pull out my uh staff of striking 
and just wail on this thing with my two attacks. Excellent. That's a nat 20 for the first one. Ruh -roh. That's pretty amazing. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. And I'm going to go ahead and spend some charges, too. Uh, it's going to be uh, 12 magical bludgeoning from the strike. And then I'm going to burn some charges. Uh, six force damage. I can burn up to three. Uh, ten force damage. All right. And nine force damage. Okay. So 20... I can math. 25. Um, force damage plus 16... Uh, of the my main attack was uh, bludgeoning, and it's bludgeoning. magical. Okay, perfect. Uh, Thirty-seven <laughs> points of damage. That was my first attack. All right. <laughs> yeah, that Very was only nice. my first attack. So, one whack with the staff, and then I just flip it around to hit, try and hit him again. You guys are never leveling up. Again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's an eighteen to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> Oh yeah, baby. And this is less exciting. That's just 13 magical bludgeoning. Okay. And that's all I can do. <laughs> that's that it, was you a know. Lot. That was a lot. That's, that's all. Four points of damage. <laughs> I didn't even have to spend key for that attack. Like, dang. Oh, and you know what? Because, oh, no, never mind. It wasn't a flurry of blows. I can't do that. Just kidding. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna. That last attack, stunning strike. Give me a con save. <laughs> From an undead dragon, that's gonna be or an undead uh, giant. Giant, that's gonna be good. That's a seven. Oh yeah, DC eighteen. So it's stunned until the end of my next turn. All right, I got it in stunned. And with that, before uh, Olaf goes, we have. I'm going to do the battlefield at initiative 11. Um, so the drow regain their spell focus, uh, not focus, but their focus on their spell and begin channeling once again into the three remaining undead giants. Um, they begin acting differently, though. They're no longer sort of lethargic and trying to cast these enormous, like, bubbles over their head. They're now casting enormous ice spheres over their heads. And that is exactly what the drow are going to be doing this turn. The giants are summoning these, you know, giant Kamehameha balls with our spirit bombs. And uh, a, new, a new player enters the field, shall we say. From the stairs below in this opening... You see a procession of four robed figures coming up. Um, the one in the lead is carrying an enormous golden staff. It looks like a twisted branch of some tree that is made of gold. You're unsure exactly, but it carries this enormous red gem in the center of it. And as he rise, raises it, and he thumps it back down to the ground. You see as a wave ripples out from him. And those fallen on the field seem to revert, come back together, recoalesce the black goo individuals that just sort of melted, seem to revert in time back to a prior version of themselves. The giants seem to restore and the individual holds up the staff and says to you, cease your insolence. And with that is going to be uh, Olaf's turn. Question, Corey, was that from the staff or was that a spell? That was from the staff. Okay, well then I, I can't counterspell it. Um, but I am going to hit the rooftop with a ninth level fireball. That might be effective. Yeah. Uh, I need a dex save. Um, uh, you mean a dex save of no? <laughs> Actually, that was pretty good. All right. About half of them succeed. Yeah, my DC is 16, so. 
Oh, actually, that was an 18, so very few of them failed. But they will still take... I expected your DC was higher than that. Well, if I was casting a cleric spell, this is my bard's uh, save DC. Okay, okay. Mm. That explains it. I was wondering how you got a hold of Fireball as a grave cleric. You see Olaf as he, he was a rises his hands up into the air, and this enormous sense. spirit bomb appears above him, Dragon Ball Z style, and he says, oh, we can play this game too. And just lobs it, and it arcs across in this molten lava and splashes outwards. The drow go diving in every direction in which they can, some of them falling off the edge. And so 66 for those that didn't save. Nice. 33 for, for those, those who that did. did. I, nice. I, I actually failed that save. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I only take 16 because of evasion and bear rage. Wow. Bear. Mm. So this enormous sort of splash of lava explosion just rolls across the top of the tower. What is the AOE on that? 60 foot spear. Yeah, it covers the entire top of the tower. It blasts several of the uh, the drow off the edges and the uh, the one of the giants catches on fire. The the individual with the staff seems remarkably unaffected. Uh, I would like to take my movement now. Okay. <laughs> I would like to fly and catch Rex. <laughs> or okay. at least attempt to fly and catch, catch Rex. He has fallen approximately 60 feet, so it isn't too hard for you to get down there. Um, what is your fly speed? Uh, looking at that right now. If it's from the fly spell then it's 60 feet yeah 60 feet easy you can get down to him please roll for me a dex check not a save uh that's a natural 20 oh yeah yeah you swoop in you catch him you've got a rose through your teeth They're like this is some heroic <laughs> stuff right here uh what were you thinking lols you would have gone splat <laughs> Not on my watch. That's my turn. Okay. <laughs> you know, they say you only live once. True. True. <clears throat> Rex yellowed. Okay. Um, and that is going to bring us back to the top of initiative order uh, with uh, Urgrosh. I'm going to take my big double-ended sword spin it behind me and as I'm spinning it fly straight at staff guy okay this feels like enemy number one uh, and I'm going to recklessly attack him okay uh, does a 23 hit it does okay that is 39 magical slashing damage uh, 39 magical slashing damage. Perfect. All right. And if that seems to work, you know. You see as your blade slashes through his robes and no blood goes flying. There appears a wound, but it is dry. Okay. I have blind sight. This this thing exists, right? It has a physical existence. It does. Okay, cool. I'm gonna slash you it. You also again. felt as you crushed through several ribs. I didn't think about that one. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> hit him again. Um, those that's a thirty-one for fourteen damage, and backhand because I get a bonus action attack for a twenty-three for another twelve. All right. Um. And I'll just stay right in his face because that feels like the tank job at this particular juncture. <laughs> anything he attacks me with, anybody, any, anything anybody attacks me with does have advantage, though, because I reckless attacked. Okay, okay. And that's me. All right. And, I'm going to run uh, to the bathroom really quick. Well, you might want to wait for just a moment. <laughs> um, because he's going to use a legendary action. Love it. He's going to reach out. 
and he's going to attempt to touch you on the forehead. Uh oh. Uh, AC is 19 and he has advantage. Assuming this is an attack roll. I think this is something it is. else. Uh, well, that was a 19 on the die. <laughs> I think it hits uh, 14. Me. So, yeah, that hits you. He touches you on the forehead. I need a wisdom save. Oh, boy. A death boob. A death, death boob. Death boob. <laughs> <laughs> nice level okay. death boob. Okay, that's a 27 on my wisdom save. Uh, I, okay, perfect. You successfully find yourself uh, in the future two days. That's what happens if I fail the save? Could might not have been only two days. <laughs> um, so what's it like two days in the future? Is it sunny and nice? <laughs> Did it we is. succeed? Are there actually, like bodies everywhere? <laughs> you find yourself quite comfortable. Um, everything has been provided for you for these last few days. Um, these drow that you thought were enemies are they're actually more reasonable than most of the humans you've encountered and this society is peace tranquility why why on earth and then suddenly you find yourself back in the present prone and laying, just sort of trying to figure out what the heck just happened. I look at staff, staff guy and go, <laughs> time magic makes my brain hurt. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Next in the initiative order. Yeah, go ahead. Um, next in the initiative order is going to be Bernard Salamander. As I begin flying over to the place, I go, Thank you for picking him up. I was going to do it myself. No <laughs> <Yelling problem. down. laughs> and I just fly. <laughs> landing just kind of clawed right on the side of this, this tower. Aiming to hit everyone. As I look at them. Flames starting to just billow out of my mouth. I go, I am fire. I am death. And then DC 21 deck save for everything up there. That includes Nat. <laughs> I'm noting down that that is the new campaign slogan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So four of them managed to succeed. Uh, 30, 36. I, I'm doing all my, D, my natural sixes first. Uh, 42, 48. You, okay. you could just take a high average and. No, I can do this really quick. And we are at 89 fire damage. Yeah, that's face meltingly hot. I'm so sorry, Urgrosh. Um, <laughs> I don't know that. Um... Nat, Nat, you're going to need to make a DC 21 deck save. You are also prone. So you, you do that at normal because you have advantage because of danger sense, right? Got it. Evasion takes. What? Oh, he made it. Okay, you take none of the 89 fire damage. <laughs> High level uh, gaming. And then... And Evasion's nice, fam. That's true. Had anybody actually taken any damage at all in this game? Uh, you did? Yeah. I'm yeah. down 11 hit points from friendly oh, fire. That's... Wow. <laughs> that, uh, that actually sucks. But it's okay, because you had 14 temp, so you're still up 3. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, that's after the temp. I've actually taken 25 oh. from Friendly Fire Total. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so okay. I cast um, Healing Word at third level because I can do that in my dragon form uh, because druids are awesome. <laughs> For your bonus action. For my bonus action. So that's uh, 3d4 plus 5. Uh, one, three. Uh, three. So 7 plus 5, 12 hit points. Yeah, you're, you're max now. I so am at full hit points. You set fire to the battlefield. You unleash this inferno of dragon fire upon these poor frostbitten individuals atop the tower. Oi. Um, is it raining? It is because he set fire. I was going to ask to the rain. <laughs> oh my god, it is now. I'm glad I wasn't the only one whose mind immediately went there. Thank you, Nat. Love you, man. all right. 
So it is raining fire on everybody on top of this this tower now. Um, and everything is the blaze. It is set into an inferno. Um, the dragon, or not the dragon, the um, undead giants are pillars of fire. Uh, the drow are melting into puddles of flesh on the ground. But you note the one individual with the staff and the three following him are protected in a glowing blue sphere. Mm. I, uh, because I still have 60 feet of movement, pull myself up onto the tower and just move all the way towards the doorway, leaving enough room if anybody else wants to get into the doorway. But this giant draconic form is uh, there. All right. And that's my turn. Excellent. And next in initiative order is going to be Fen. You're new new So the ringleader person is in like a protective bubble, you said? Mm -hmm. Can I cast the spell magic on that, please? On the sphere? I mean, does it look like it's magic? It's definitely magic. It's definitely magic. Yeah. I'm it is gonna... a magical effect. It's a, so dispel magic is an area of effect, not a targeted spell. That's right. Um, okay. Yeah, um, it's a yeah, choose one creature, object, or magical effect within range. Okay, so you're dispelling it, the sphere. Yes. At fifth it'll be fifth level. All right. And what do I need to do? Roll a Um, so if the spell is less than fifth level, it's automatically dispelled. Otherwise, um, I have to make an ability check and the DC is 10 plus the spell's level. That's a 19. No, I... Oh, Jesus Christ. That, 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 that. Yeah. You I believe in you. Yeah, but you can make it. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, just an ability... An ability check. Okay. Just straight charisma yeah. usually. Yeah, it's just your your spell yeah. casting modifier. Yeah, yeah. Easy, Seventeen easy. plus five, so that's a twenty-two. Twenty-two will be enough. A sudden silence crashes outward as the gem goes dim and muted. The sphere disappears amid the inferno. And you see the edges of his cloak begin singeing amid the inferno, um, amid the fire. And uh, the individual behind him steps around and pulls back his hood. And you see before you Dr. Moroz. <coughs> yes, cease, friends. Cease. We are not your foes. Do I believe him? Because I'm like right there. You can roll an insight. Oh, I got to do dragon insight. Hold on. I'll roll insight. <laughs> I'm like still wailing on yeah, that giant. Yeah, I would love. I would love to roll insight. That's a good, my, cool uh, thirty. Oh, cool, oh, it's the same as my normal insight. All right, so uh, I was twenty. Is also a good, cool thirty. Uh, this Man, appears to be Doctor Moroz. He does not appear to be deceiving you. Keyword so he appears. believes that. He believes that at the very least. Yeah. Friends, I wish I could tell you more, but Zendrick is a strange beast. We have made it here among the most advanced civilization this world has ever known. I once sought to uncover the mysteries of Zendrik and reveal it for my own vain, glorious needs to, to discover and be remembered throughout all of eternity. But why simply be remembered when you can live throughout all of eternity? Uh, one second, missing a note here. Sounds like a thrall to me. I mean, sounds like he's got a valid point. But a thrally valid point. Thrally validly point. Thr valid thrally point. 
I speak from experience. That sounds like a frawl. <laughs> <laughs> Look. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. All right, yeah, so... almost felt bad about that. <laughs> the uh, the drow almost <clears throat> says to you, these drow are the Sulatar. They have enlightened me. However today goes from this point forward is up to you, but know this. The secret of this civilization and this advanced magic must not be known to the rest of the world, lest the giants once again reclaim this continent and threaten us all. The Silinar are to be trusted. They are our friends. If you wish to, if you wish to continue this violence, you will fare poorly, but the world shall nevertheless remain ignorant of what has transpired here today. I leave this to you. And he pulls his hood back up and he steps back in behind the individual. The sphere now gone. Uh, we are still at uh, Fen's initiative order. Is that right? Uh, yeah, there's not really anything else I can do. I'll just fly over and like <clears throat> land next to where like Lior and Urgarsh and Urgosh. Dragon Bernie Urgar Urgrosh. <laughs> All right. And uh, next would be Lior Dragon. and. Um, as there are only four remaining drow on the battlefield, and there is no way to regain uh, or to rejuvenate anybody that has been burned to an ash and blown away in the breeze, um, we can move directly on to Olaf after that. So, Leor, what would you like to do? So... Oh, yeah, and Rex... Oh, and Rex, yeah. Actually, Rex goes before yeah, Leor. Yeah, I, think I, before, I yeah. totally skipped you. I'm sorry, Rex. Sorry. Um, I use my action to turn into Flubber. What? I use my action to turn into Flubber, which I can do. So I'm now oh. an ooze. Oh, oh do you have I that magic so item? Sorry, Olaf. Yeah, I do. You are now carrying oh, a black oh, ooze. What happened to him? No, no, I'm still myself, but I'm also an ooze, which means I get all the properties of an ooze. That you are going to devour Olaf? Nope, I'm then going to use my climbing speed as a news to and my bonus action of dash to climb up to the top. So like I like symbiote up to the top. I think I saw this in Venom. Um you guys are worried about Dr. Moreau's, but that guy's bad. I could turn. All right. Urgrash is just putting it on his list. Okay, I need just, to I kill just, graves. I just appeal it to the top. I'd like my body constitute itself at the top. With the gun I like to think forward. as soon as Rex turns into an ooze, Olaf just like throws him. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> just and then just climb up and yeah, action and bonus action. I'm at the top as if, and I'm like I'm in my symbiote form for a minute. All right, and you see you you will crest the edge just in, just in time to see Dr. Moreau's pull his hood back up over his head and step in behind the, the staff individual, or the individual with the staff. And next we will have Lior. Okay. Um, so the, I don't even know what to do right now. <laughs> um, it's just the four, the four drow up on top of the pyramid, right? Uh, yeah, and, uh, yes, right up here. Okay, and I don't know where Leor, like, where were the, the giants in relation to that? Because Fen, Leor has Fen nearby. The giants there, right? are now pillars of fire. They are right. no longer giants. <laughs> Leor is just still where they were, though, because that's what I was yeah. dealing with. So I'm just trying to figure out how far I am from anything. Can I, I can get to the drow, I imagine, with my crazy fast oh, fly you, speed still, right? Did you roll a deck save to get away from the fire? Um, you know, you I don't think I life. did, but I'll do that now. I've also got evasion, though, so, like, 
Uh, yeah, I succeed. <laughs> okay, I thought, you, I thought you might. I thought you might. Uh, I was a 17 on the die plus one. Like I just wanted to see if, if our dragon was going to, you know, friendly fire kill one of our. No, I no. had to roll a 19. <laughs> Dex is way better than mine. Uh, yeah, that was like a 28 or something. My Dex is like plus 11. Okay, <laughs> so you you are going to. Uh, there are oh. still four drow that are very singed standing amid the fire. It's still like enemies though right like i know they were talking to us but as far as i know we still want to mess them up right i just sort of like look around like do i urgrash is kind of like maybe don't murder this is character motive 100 percent. you were you or were you not party to dr moreau's saying this and i think being in melee was something else you may not have yeah caught every i don't think i would have i would have been too distracted for sure um then yeah i'll do it i'll zip right up and whoever's in charge whoever looks in charge i'm wailing on them <laughs> <laughs> okay do you... uh they're within 100 feet though right i don't need absolutely to... okay absolutely. uh yeah easily <laughs> oh, this is silly uh, i'm gonna go ahead and uh whip out my staff or keep my staff and bonk whoever looks uh fanciest and in charge on in, in the, be the one holding the golden staff yeah that sounds reasonable that's gonna be a uh oh boy uh, uh yes that's a 20 something <laughs> to hit um <laughs> robed figures generally don't have the highest armor class that's why they usually use magical shields yeah and that's some gonna clever <laughs> adventure comes along and dispels it that's gonna be 18 magical bludgeoning and i would like a uh, constitution saving throw please for a stun um oh yeah i'm, I'm sure you can do that uh how how about a nine? Oh yeah that'll uh that'll fail um, so this drow is now stunned until the end of my next turn, and, uh, my next three attacks are all at advantage. Awesome. Hang on. <laughs> monks. <laughs> I love monks. Okay, that's a 19 on the die. Uh, so that's gonna be, uh, a, it's gonna be 19 magical bludgeoning, um, and then flurry of blows, because I can. Uh, that's another 20-something to hit. And that's going to be another 18 um, magical bludgeoning. <laughs> and then that's a 26 to hit. Uh, and that's going to be another 19 magical bludgeoning. Um, and I don't want to go totally nuts. I won't. <laughs> 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 okay, you just beat the ever living snot, and you can see the dust is just flying from inside of these robes as you are just pummeling uh, this uh, this desiccated individual. I mean, he's stunned, so it doesn't matter, but he also can't take any reactions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sam. <laughs> Look, it's just something that I don't have to spend key points on for it to happen, so I'm gonna. Sam, you're no longer allowed to play monks. <laughs> Oh, First man. Suniva and now this. <laughs> hey, yo, Suniva did not roll nearly as well as Leora's is rolling today. I'm just going to get that out there. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So you just beat the crap out of this desiccated whatever. Yeah, like, nobody even sees individual. it. <laughs> okay. There are blurs that used to be limbs and there's, there are, there are, there were feels. Uh Okay, so following up with that, next we'll go, go just go straight on into Olaf, and then I think we are going to decide whether or not we want to continue an initiative. Uh, so Olaf wasn't anywhere around for the speech, so he is going to fly up and land next to his friends, and he will cast Spirit Guardian. Um, and I will make all my allies all my friends immune to the effects immune to the effects of just a second uh, when he casts spirit gardens he chooses people to not be hurt by it i'm going to cast it at eighth level so it will be all of the party members um i think i froze there i need a wisdom saving throw Is Zoom giving anybody else any trouble? 
But you're oh, frozen for me. You're just frozen for us. Oh, you're, oh, there you're you back. Just, back. Hey, there you are. That was weird. Sorry, everybody. Minor technical glitch. Um, all right. So immune to, to what? So I need a wisdom saving throw from the three that are not my friends. Uh, okay, so the lowest of them is a 15, and the other uh, ones my... are a 20 and a 21. Okay, so they'll the 20 and 21 will still take half damage. Um, I was casting it at eighth level. Um, what are you what are you casting? Cast spirit guardians. Spirit guardian. Okay, okay. So the one that failed takes 18. The other takes nine. The other two take nine. Radiant damage. Right. Perfect. As light emits from a, some another plane, as spirits step through and sort of begin. Uh, well, what, how how are they uh, how are they interacting and inflicting this damage? Uh, basically, you see, kind of, they look kind of like maybe pixies, and they kind of start flying around. And they're just stabbing with their little spears. Um, it was not nice. Working. Their little spears of light. She's ah ah. All right, and um. And then. All right, so that is two. enough. And you are attacking the robed individuals, correct? The correct. Here. Okay. Yep. And so the one in the front reels like visibly from the light. Once a week to do. And. If that, that is going to be the end of the round. Do we want to persist in the attack? We've got half of the party who is close by and, and recognizing what's happening. And then we have a few people who were maybe not as aware of what had been happening, who are sort of cluing in now to that the there are some people who are no longer attacking. So what is the party consensus right now? Are we going to continue with the fight? I will say that we've got we're getting close to the end of the this turn. Anything that needed to be faxed was documents. Um, I think Fan would probably be like, <laughs> um, the doctor said to stop attacking them. So, I mean, do with that information what you will. <laughs> uh, I'm going to incite Finn because I wasn't there and I got a natural twenty, so I'm assume Finn's telling the truth to me. <laughs> I don't know, Finn. Are you telling the truth? <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you do there. know, Corey. You do know. <laughs> so, yeah, let's at, let's take exit point, combat. I think, right? We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll hold here at the end of the round and see how you want to proceed. We'll keep our initiative order if we need to. But uh, the individual who identified themselves as Doctor Moreau's is now going to sort of blend and twist and what you thought was four robed figures <clears throat> seems to be one figure and it seems to be growing taller and suddenly like as if it were twisting out of nowhere the staff just begins growing like a tree and the gem is sort of travels upward in the growth of this twisting tree and becomes the eye of this enormous golden I, or this golden tree-like dragon uh, as it stretches outward and encompasses nearly half the top of this tower and looks down at you or across at you, Bernard. Yeah. And you <clears throat> might choose now. Um, so what are you? I have many names over the ages, but you have proven worthy. You have come to be given the choice. You have made it past the defenses. Will you now turn against and reveal our secret to the land? for personal glory and gain. <laughs> or will you join us here, I wonder? I mean, personal glory and gain's kind of my thing. 
if we're being honest. Mm. I do have a bit of a reputation, but I mean, like, I don't really want to join you, but if I can just like go somewhere else and not be here, but I promise I won't tell anybody, like, is that an option? Is there an option C? He sort of reaches out and makes an attempt to touch you on the forehead. Oh, I, I don't, I don't like that. Okay, so you're going to attempt to just like, dodge. I'm just like, just like a like, like I just lean back. Like, it's only a seventeen to touch, so he he leans in, he tries to extend the claw towards your forehead, but you manage to lean out of the way awkwardly, and it wasn't supposed to be intimidating, so he sort of pulls his his claw back. It's like. What do you do you protect this land? Do you do a service? What is your point? All lands. The giants must not be given control. Is that why you your is that why you're Scottish? Is that why you keep them slaves then? I have been charged by the traveler to protect this last bastion of the Sulinar and to prevent them from taking over all of Zendrik. Just as a question, DM, he, did you say Moros became part of this thing? Uh, so the four individuals in the robes um, sort of like turned into the staff and grew into this gnarled and twisted golden um, being that looks like a dragon made out of golden tree. So the answer is yes. He, he, Moros is part of this, you're saying, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Just making sure because if Moros was still there, there was something I was going to do, but he's not. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'll look at him and just be like, <clears throat> what becomes of us if we stay? Yes, well, the world must never know where you went and what happened. But like many who have been lost in this land before you, your bodies will be left to rot. But you will, much like Dr. Moreau's, come to live forever. Look, if these crazy magic to God stories are true, then the heinous acts of the giants caused the gods to curse this land. I don't want to let that kind of magic back into the world, so I think what you're doing is important. I might even fight for you, but I'm not going to become part of you. Certainly not. I'm not going to die either. You would not die. You would be forever. This is simply, call it a simulacrum for others to find. Oh and we're going to wrap it there. And we'll, <laughs> as we're going around and doing our um, exits, we'll just go ahead and talk about, uh, you know, quickly what your character would have decided in this moment. Well, how do you want to start? Let's go ahead and start with uh, Nat, and we'll go clockwise as we did at the beginning. Please tell us sure. about you and your character and uh, what they would have chosen in this moment. So, hi, I'm Nat. You can find me on the internet talking about D and D and TTRPGs at Crime Nat on Twitter. Um, I also do freelance layout, design, editing, and I'm also part of what many of us are part of on Mondays with no initiative. Over on Chromatic Chimera, we play Dead Skies by Night at 6.30 Eastern Time. Time zones are hard uh, every Monday. And we have a great time in Eberron, although not quite this high level, so we don't frustrate Corey as much. Urgrosh <laughs> is all about that protect the world shit. Very superhero. Um, so he might he's intrigued, but this whole like becoming one simulacrum thing, maybe, so he'd probably try to like 
strike a deal, which, you know, who knows how that would end. But that's kind of where he's thinking. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to shoot it over to Sam. Uh, hey, uh, Lior, uh, definitely not so interested in, uh, this whole deal. I mean, you know, they, uh, they, they, they got a family to get back to over in, uh, Sharon and a, uh, retirement to enjoy. And, uh, you know, my adventuring days are, uh, mostly behind me. So that's, uh, just not my thing. Um, and, you know, they'll just punch anybody to death who tries to stop them. So <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. And they are valid. They <laughs> are valid. Um, so hey, everybody, I am Sam. You can find me on Twitter at the Sam Wisest. I am a disability advocate in addition to being a TTRPG streamer. Mostly you can see me on the Chromatic Chimera in addition to Dead Skies with no initiative Yay! on Mondays. You can see me on Wednesdays in Agora's Bells or Steam Spell. Um, this Tuesday, it's the first Tuesday of the month, so I'm going to be playing in our monthly game Elsewhere. Um, and I am also a co-producer and a GM over on Heroes Without Limits, which is a community by and for disabled, chronically ill, and neurodivergent gamers. Come and join us this Thursday for episode two of Tales from Thra, which is a Dark Crystal set uh, 5e game that I am GMing and which our uh, wonderful uh, Crime Net is playing in. Um, please check it out. It's a ton of fun. Um, and you can follow them at H Without Limits. Um, give us some support. And I think that's all I got going on right now. I really feel like I'm that, forgetting that's something. All. Yeah, that's, that's all. all. Just just that, you know, whatever. I really feel like I'm forgetting something, but I think that's that's fine. It's fine. Come and see me on Wednesdays. I'm at Chromatic Chimera all the time there. <laughs> uh, Robert, oh, you are- I'm muted. I knew nude. Uh, <clears throat> I am Robert Allen. I am a voice here. actor, as I said before. He's always here in our hearts. He's with us here. Yeah, he's here. actually in the chat. Yeah, yeah, I he know. He was in the chat. <laughs> yeah, he was at least. Uh, I'm a voice actor. You can you can see the things that I might maybe possibly be doing on the Twitters when I know that I can say things about them, which is not currently yet, but I think one of them at least is soon. Ooh, ooh. Um, I also, you know, play uh, on uh, Chromatic Chimera uh, every Monday, 6.30 to 9.30 Eastern Time with the lovely people in the L. Uh, the, the, it goes straight and then down. It's L for losers because that's what we are um, in the thing. Myself, Sam, Nat, Megan, uh, plus one Nunu who is not here. Uh, and yeah, you should come see us for that because that game is fire almost as much as fire as I breathed out today. Um, there was dragon fire. You know, <laughs> session. Kiki would Real have quick, been proud. <laughs> Robert, to be clear, um, we're in the world of Eberron and, um, you know, so the rest of our characters and yes, though we might be uh, on normal schedule for um, the people that you mentioned before. Um, I would not be surprised if we were to see, say uh, Tim and Jeremy over on, uh, no initiative guesting in at some point. Good. In your future. Good. You never Better know happen. who might pop in. Just saying. Just saying. And uh, Bernard Salamanders, uh, he's got a mission, you know, so he would he would try to uh, see if this thing would let those who do not want to stay go as long as there's a promise of, you know, not saying anything. If the answer was no, oh, he would breathe fire on it because I got my fire breath back. So just saying. <laughs> he would fight for the people. Who don't want to stay you get what i'm saying <laughs> uh oh and i can i'll pass it down to tim tams over here radio <laughs> uh hi i'm tim at Anna and martin on social interwebs um you can find me writing tweeting about anything and everything from DD to what i do in my daily job uh my pinned tweet at the moment is a load of random homebrew i've been working on for a while so if you like homebrew to do with monks sam and warlocks everyone else you know it's there um, uh, Rex, considering he's still just got about a minute left of him being a news, while he would love to become the vice president of vices, he would have leapt down the throat of that dragon with his one inch wide movement, because he's a news, and just using the poison 
and acid erode the dragon from the inside out. And then if he did die, he turns into a black pudding, which would have caused a bit more damage and a bit of heart can burn, really, um, because he doesn't really like the idea of enslaving anyone just to keep the status quo going. <laughs> That's me. Fantastic <laughs> vice president for Bernard <laughs> Salamanders. <laughs> That's what Rex would have done. Jeremy. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Um, I'm Darth and Trey on Twitter. Um, you can also find me at Brock Romlo Cosplay on Instagram. Uh, had a great time. Um, love. You can find me in Corey's chat on Mondays. You can also find me in Sam's chat for Thra because I love their games. I love these people. They're amazing. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. Um, don't really have anything streaming right now, but I'm always up for guests appearances so had a blast thank you all well thanks for being here today it was great to get you involved i mean you're always so active and engaged in our chats and it was great to get you on here uh megan you're new newing damn new -newing so it. hard <laughs> today is just the day of new -newing. i know it's all over the place um so fen would have just graciously bowed out because she's got more like folk heroine to do um so that would be like a thanks no thanks i'm out bye type of thing because she's not about to like become part of a singularity and like spend the rest of her whatever as part of this giant tree thing she's got stuff to do um, but yes hello i am megan um you can find me mostly on twitter at megan lynn ftw where i just shout constantly about a lot of things mostly ttrpgs um you can find me obviously with a bunch of these wonderful people on mondays on the chromatic chimera playing in eberron you can also find me on the chromatic chimera i host a monthly um gm -less stream where i grab some really cool people and facilitate gm -less games um this coming month so next tuesday and then a two, so the 10th and the 24th, we're doing a two-parter where we're playing Dialect. Um, Nat and Sam are going to be part of that game along with um, Gabe James. And I'm so excited because that's my favorite, favorite game. Um, so that should be super duper fun. I am also an indie game designer and you can find any of my games on meganlynftw.itch.io. Um, mostly GMless because that's my jam. Um, so you can check out any of my stuff there. And I think, yeah, I think that's about it. So I'll throw it over to our illustrious uh, dragon manager. All right. Uh, well, speaking of dragon managing, uh, I am at DM Corey, uh, dragon manager Corey, apparently. Uh, it's sort of stuck. But um, yeah, so real quick, as we all make our decisions, um, we choose to live our lives in the vein that we have lived them previously and go about our own ways. And the god Sybaris touches each of you into your own private realities. Contingencies of reality to protect the danger of this island from escaping. Big rude. Just playing shift out of that. I'm just, you know, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, I won't. I'm a barbarian. <laughs> yeah, I'll just pop into the astral plane. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, I can do this. Uh, yeah, I can astral plane and plane shift. I'm good. Bye. You I'll are be dead. You all live the lives that you have wanted to live with the power and everything that you have accomplished. And the world is protected from the knowledge within Zendrick. To be fair, Bernard wouldn't, you know. Well, so when he when he plane shifts back home, or they're, they're never gonna find out anyway. He's he's old; he'll forget. <laughs> Reunion tour, everybody. <laughs> yes. Thirty Better second be. chemical reaction, right? I was really hoping Spirit Guardians was just going to be like a spectral band shows up and starts playing. That would have been pretty excellent. Oh. Yeah, for for us. The people Next who time. he had saved, it sounded amazing. And for the enemies, it sounded like just a vicious chorus of horribleness. And that's how they take the damage. Or the oh, spectral right. form of groupies. 
<clears throat> yes. Here, Amazing stream. That, Rex. Amazing stream, everyone. I had so much fun playing this. I definitely did not anticipate nobody would want to go and join the advanced civilization of, of the Siladar. Um, but uh, we venture onward and uh, maybe maybe Sybaris can get some followers in the next party that comes to Zendrik. <laughs> You'll get them next time, champ. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for watching and thank you for so much for your donations to uh, One Drop for Flint and uh, congratulations to all of our winners in chat for our, the dice and uh, the gift cards and the, uh, the game of uh, Power Outage, which I think I don't know if we're going to be doing a run of that on here, but I'm definitely going to be checking it out and uh, maybe I'll put something together on it. So thank you all for being amazing players and uh, thank you so much for being here. And thank you all for watching our, our short little show in Lost in Zendrick. And uh, hopefully I can get something put up on DMs Guild from this. I did quite a bit of a write up for this. So, uh, all right. We love you all. Thanks for joining us. Have a great Tuesday. Here. <laughs>